it has been a hot second since I picked up a camera and filmed anything. So if I sound weird, if I look weird, okay, if I'm sitting weirdly and I'm molding the camera weirdly and have weird angles, forgive me. It has been so long you wouldn't believe it if you follow the ongoings of the channel. I recently moved to Florida. I keep tilting the camera like, yeah, yeah. I recently moved, I recently moved to Florida and I, you know, I have the tripod like right there, but I, I'm deficient. I'm deficient when it comes to, I'm, I'm tripod challenged. That's what my sister says. So I'm just holding the camera right now. But yeah, I recently moved to Florida and um, I'm so happy to be here. And I wanted to kind of kickstart my reading with like a 24 hour readathon to see if I can get as many books as I possibly can filmed and finished within a 24 hour period. I recently posted a uh, poll on the community page asking people how they define a 24 hour readathon. Let me know in the comments below as well. For me, I think the first 24 hour readathon that I've ever seen on booktube had to be like just somebody starting a timer, not a timer, a stopwatch, right? And they just start from like sun up to sundown, like 10 a.m. to 10 a.m. the next day. You know what I mean? And if they slept, it was like, funny to see because it's like exhaustion maybe they got three two hours of sleep that would have been fine but i think it's even more fun when you see the person is like struggling not to sleep so they like really have like a telethon readathon kind of feeling where they're just awake the entire time yeah so i had the options of like stopwatch meaning like you start the stopwatch every time you are actually reading which would take more than 24 hours you probably would be doing this for like three days or so depending on how much you're sleeping and reading there's also the non-stop version where you're reading and then you can sleep the non stop version where you're just reading and you can't sleep I think that's what I was just saying and then of course some people kind of do freestyle so yeah I was just curious about your thoughts about that but instead of me rambling on forever let's go ahead and talk about the books which you probably have already seen okay let me see if I could try to set this down on my tripod I just I hate the whole notion you guys tripods are annoying okay so the first book that i do have is shadow of the dragon by sherry garland yeah i'm so excited to read this so just a little blurb from the back it says here that 16 year old danny vo feels caught between two different very two different very worlds two very different worlds i still i just woke up he's uh he feels caught between two very different worlds he fits in with his american friends yet they don't understand his traditional vietnamese home life when his cousin sang le comes to okay the book has a little bit of a wear and tear so the words are a little difficult to read when he comes to live with his family after spending years in a re-education camp in vietnam danny becomes a silent witness of his cousin as he falls in with a vietnamese Gang, gang, gang. What is that? Where's that from? Ugh, let me not. Let me just not. <laughs> okay, so so we're talking about family life. This is a young adult book. Um, my sister recommended it and I wanna see if I can finish it. I've never actually finished one book in a day. I've never finished a book in a day. It has 314 pages. Lord of the Flies by William Golding is a, a reread. I've read this book at least two or three times before in my lifetime obviously. So basically this follows just these like schoolboys who they crash on this deserted island. They're thinking that the queen must know of all the islands on earth because she has like a map of it which is hilarious and that you know they'll be found or maybe they won't. You kind of see the dynamics of how people regress to barbarianism and inhumaneness, inhum inhumanity, their inhumanity, barbarianism and how they can easily become inhumane and almost corrupted and evil when you don't have the the beautiful luxuries of civility all the time around you so these kind of young boys they go from prim and proper to nearly it was very sad to nearly i think i don't want to spoil it but something tragic happens to one of the boys in the book if i recall and um by the time i will spoil this okay by the time that they are found, the adult was like, he sees them as these dirty children with ratty, raggedy clothes and they look like natives. I don't want to say natives. That's not, it doesn't seem right, but like they look like just barbarians. Like they just look like they're, they look like they're from like a removed society and it's just so disappointing to see their fall. That's Lord of the Flies by William Golding and I feel like it's a very, like it's very classic. So boys, boys, 
voice. <laughs> so S.C. Hinton's The Outsiders, another recommendation by my sister. These are small books as you can tell because I'm trying to see if I can squeeze in as many as possible. And also I've been meaning to read uh, The Outsiders for the longest time. I've seen the film a couple of times and um, you know it's very enjoyable. I think this has to do with these two gangs, the Socias and the Greasers, and that's the most that I know about it. My sister really loves it. In the back it says Ponyboy can count on his brothers and on his friends but not on much else besides troubles troubles trouble with the soch Socias, a vicious gang of rich kids whose idea of a good time is beating up greasers like Pony Boy. You see, Pony Boy, I don't know if that is this man here <laughs> or if it's the Karate Kid, okay? And I can't get his name for the life of me right now. I don't know. I don't know. Pony Boy. I, I Maybe finally I'll be able to like remember. And then this one here, Ender's Game. I actually did start reading this. I feel like it's really disturbing and distressing the kind of stuff I'm encountering in the book. I don't know. I don't know and I'm going to maybe around the afternoon time when I finally hit this book, if I am able to actually get three done today, I'll come back to you guys and let you know what is going on. The issue that I found in this book is that they were describing the six-year-old boy in very inappropriate, he was in a lot of inappropriate circumstances. It's very odd and just, it's it's uncomfortable, it's distressing, it's disturbing, and I don't know what the deal is with this guy, Orson Scott Card. I kind of did a little bit of research and found out that he's, he, I don't even want to say that because I feel horrible to kind of paint a picture of all people who might be in this religion. But no, like I just, I don't know. I just don't know how I feel about this. And I believe this is going to be, once I finish reading it, it's going to go into my um, unhaul pile to go to the little free library and maybe somebody else could find some use out of this. But I just, just blah, blah, blah. It's a little weird. It's a little weird. And then I also have Douglas Adams. These are like all the boys, if you've noticed. Like this is all about like boys today. But um, yeah, I have Douglas Adams, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The blurb in the back, it says that it's extremely funny and inspired lunacy. And so seconds before Earth is demolished to make way for a galactic freeway, Arthur Dent is plucked off the planet by his friend Ford Prefect, a researcher for the revised edition of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, who for the last 15 years has been posing as an out-of-work actor. Together this dynamic pair began a journey through space aided by a galaxy of fellow travelers, Zaphod Beeblebrox, that sounds like Beelzebul, the two-headed three-armed ex-hippie and totally out to lunch president of the galaxy, <laughs> Trillian, formerly Trisha McMillan, Zaphod's girlfriend, whom Arthur tried to pick up at a cocktail party once Arthur cocktail party. Okay, they don't say anything about him being a kid. I was like, cocktail party, Arthur. I'm just getting really traumatized by Ender's Game. But anyway, you guys get uh, the gist. They go on with a lot of weird names. So I'm hoping these are very easy reads. And then to break up the monotony of boys, 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 I wanted to read The Girl Who Drank the Moon. Years ago, I saw Emma from Emmy's channel read that at night. She had a cozy environment and was like, loving the book to pieces that, in, that she ended up like crying or something. I wanted to pick this up for the longest time. And I do believe that it is in the living room inside of my beautiful Hemness glass bookcase. So I'm gonna just grab it there. That's the footage that you're seeing right now. And then I wanted to talk to you guys about breakfast. <laughs> So for breakfast, I had these banana muffins that I did for this Gilmore Girls kind of inspired video where I was moving. That video should be up by now. And I have, so I have banana muffins that are ready, banana bread muffins. <laughs> and then I also have a protein shake that I'm gonna have. I have fruits available, apples, watermelon, which is like ice cold from the fridge, which I love. Tangerines or cuties, clementines, whatever you call them, navel oranges. And I have a green juice. Yes, I do have a green juice as well that I'm gonna enjoy. So yeah, I am so excited to get started with reading these books. You guys wish me luck. I am hoping that I stay very concentrated because I have a very hard time not being on my phone. Anyone can tell you. Yeah, I'm always on this device and it, this will be a good reprieve for me. It's amazing how this is like one of my first days off from work and I'm deciding to stay awake and to suffer all night by reading books and just making myself extremely exhausted. It is Memorial Day weekend as well. So hopefully I have activities like doing puzzles, as I said, putting up the twinkle lights, reading, just being extremely happy and cozy, have a snack time and all that stuff okay i am in florida as i said so i may get a pub sub which is from Publix, if you guys are familiar so first book sherry garland's shadow of the dragon yeah i don't know why i'd be so nervous it's like a ticking time bomb kind of thing but it's almost 10 o'clock i'm gonna start my stopwatch to do this i don't know i'm just so nervous 
this. Oh my gosh, here it is. Yeah, this is the first time, as I said, that I'm doing something like this. It's 10 o'clock and she starts. Okay guys, this book is making me very hungry. I want some Vietnamese food. I've never eaten Vietnamese food, I don't think, but it definitely makes me want to eat some Vietnamese food. Someone send me some Vietnamese food. <laughs> yeah, so far the book is very good. I love all of the cultural references and how immersive it is. It really feels like you are following a Vietnamese family with all of their ins and outs, how they say certain things, why they avoid to say things. It's like to not confuse Americans and so on and so forth. So I am enjoying it. I've already come across a little bit of a problem, meaning the gang that seems to be quite pervasive in this town. So we'll see where that leads us. I'm just gonna keep on reading. And my big comfy couch. I'm just a little annoyed with this one part of the book. The siblings are having a dispute about staying home and greeting the cousin that's coming to visit them to live with them because he lost his home. They gotta go pick him up at the airport, et cetera, et cetera. The mother tells the oldest boy, our main character, Danny, that he is the man of the house, even though there is a husband, there is a father, and that he has to settle disputes and whatnot. And he tried, his sibling was not having it. And she's like, I'm gonna go talk to mom. I'm gonna go talk to dad to see if I can get this taken care of. Basically, she wants to go out to the movies with her friends and not stay home home to greet this new cousin who's coming into town who lost everything. I just think it's so unfair because she asked for permission to go to the movies. They said it was fine long before, but it appears that it now is a conflicting time with the cousin's arrival at the airport and they didn't know that beforehand. So now they're saying, oh, you have to like rearrange your plans. And she had already cleaned the living room, the kitchen, her bedroom, did some meal prep and all of those kind of things. Why can't she go? <laughs> Why? You know? And then, so now the the oldest brother, Danny, he's like in his room, happy that his sister is gonna go talk to his mom about this issue. And then he hears them arguing and his name was called. He goes out to the kitchen and this is what the mom had to say. I was like, this is annoying. So the mom says, you must settle this dispute. She said, casting an angry glance toward her daughter. Now Kim says she does not want to stay for the homecoming party. She will not listen to me anymore. And your father is too busy and too tired to be bothered with such trivial problems. You are the oldest son and you are responsible for the manners and welfare of your younger siblings. I guess it's a cultural difference. kind of hard for me to get into this book and I really don't like the grandmother right now. That's all I have to say for now. to page 100 of the book. It's just, I feel like not much has happened within those first 100 pages. You're just introduced to, of course, to a lot of characters and whatnot. And yeah, like I'm just 
I don't know. After a couple of hours of reading, I'm on page 100. I'm not the fastest reader. I typically read about like 40 pages an hour, give or take. So I'm about on page 100 plus. And I have been getting distracted left and right from phone calls to just the urge of wanting to go online. And then of course there are people in my home that are, you know, conversing with me and I prioritize them. I'm gonna put my book down and talk to them obviously. But yeah, it's like, it's a slow going process. I think I'm gonna close Shadow of the Dragon for now. Not much has happened, but it, it's, it's a very um, YA, it reads young, it's very easy to get through, but I'm just not like completely like, oh, I gotta eat this up. After a hundred pages, you would have thought that it's like, oh, some type of action or a lot of drama and intensity would have picked up by now, but no. It has not. So I'm gonna put that down and see if I can go to maybe either The Outsiders or Lord of the Rings. Um, Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Flies, Lord of the Rings, yeah. I do have a Lord of the Rings, by the way. Look for that video. It's gonna be an unboxing where I set up my new shelf and unbox some new goodies and treasures that I have and books, really. And uh, yeah, just look out for that video. I'm sure it'll be coming up very soon. But yeah, I just, ugh. Not ugh, it's a good book. I just am not... I'm not like wanting to eat it up. So I wanna change up the scenery a little bit and maybe pick up The Outsiders to see if that might do it for me. I feel like I'm rereading the same thing over and over again. It's getting to be a little monotonous and I'm getting tired as well. So I don't know. It's nearly lunchtime. So in about an hour or so, I'm gonna go to the Publix to get myself my sandwich and um, just have my afternoon delight. Later on, I will probably stop to enjoy an episode of Walker, Texas Ranger with my family. That would be the only exception for the 24 hour readathon, but I don't know, I'm kind of just going with the flow, trying not to put too, too much pressure on myself where, you know, you're pressing stop on the stopwatch or you feel like you have to be reading the entire time. It's just not feasible. I'm just gonna, you know, try my very best and see if I can really just concentrate on reading for the majority of the 24 hours. I think it'll be way, way easier to do so when everybody goes to bed. It's like I'll have like that concentration, that quiet, that, you know, the focus. But yeah. The Outsiders, I'm gonna just start that now. Leaving all my worries, I prepare for something new. Whatever it was that held me back, I'm sure it wasn't true. Holding on too long and unresolved questions holds you down. What could have been a friendly smile has turned into a frown. I'm moving on and on. On and on. I'm moving on and on. I forgot to mention how many pages are in the, this book. Let's see, let's see. It looks like it's 180 pages, so that should be pretty fast. Huh. I just saw a few words from the last thing. Um, they're talking about Paul Newman, who, wow, he's handsome. Um, yeah, they're talking about him in the first page, on the first page, and they're also mentioning him on the last page, so I wonder what that's about. <laughs> I'm driving in my car, the road is long and full of dust. The landscape changes around me, on and on, I feel I must. Whatever happened to me, happened for my highest good. I read that in so many books, now it's almost understood. I'm moving on. I just remembered the Karate Kid's name, Ralph Macchio. I don't know, it just came to me. I already like this book better than Shadow of the Dragon, I'm sorry to say. Even though I haven't finished Shadow of the Dragon, it's just easier to read. I don't know. So we're meeting characters like Daryl, who they call Dairy Soda, and then I'm not sure who's talking right now, who's the speaker or a narrator is, so. I don't know, I like this better. I just do. I'm trying to figure out who's talking right now and I'm thinking it might be somebody named Pony Boy. As I said, you know, we have Soda Pop, Corn Pop. Uh, actually, no, not Corn Pop. <laughs> Dairy and 2-Bit Matthews has been introduced as Dairy's best friend. But I don't know, I'm just I'm already eating this up and I'm only like literally four pages in. I can't stop smiling because it feels like I recognize this. This is something that I, I know. I don't know why, what it is about 
like this writing compared to Sherry Garland's that I'm just gravitating more towards. I don't know if it's because I've seen the movie before and I can place actors' faces, whether it be Tom Cruise, Emilio Estevez, that guy who plays Matt Dillon, I think that's his name, Ralph Macchio, and the guy who plays George Foyette in Criminal Minds, C. Howell, something, something Howell. Oh, and there's also Patrick Swayze. There's a bunch of guys in this movie that I recognize, and of course, Rob Lowe. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know who is talking. I'm thinking it might be Pony Boy. Is Pony Boy brothers with Soda Pop and Daryl, Derry? I don't know. I don't know. Or jo Oh, there's somebody named Johnny here too. I'm gonna keep, I'm just gonna keep reading and I'll let you know what it is maybe halfway through the book, but I love this so far and I've only gotten four pages in. I don't know. I'm back again just to talk, just to talk your head off, your ears off. Okay, I'm trying to decide who everybody is. I don't know. I don't. I'm gonna say Pony Boy is C. Thomas Howell, AKA Foyette from Criminal Minds. There's this guy named Dallas Winston. I feel like that's that Matt Dillon looking guy. Soda Pop, I think might be Rob Lowe. Derry, who is like the oldest brother, I feel like might, might be Patrick Swayze. I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong. Okay, so Patrick Swayze, Rob Lowe, and then, <laughs> and then Pony Boy, AKA C. Thomas Howell. I say that they're a family. Now, <clears throat> uh, Two Bit Matthews, AKA Keith. Is that Emilio Estevez? And I think Johnny, is Johnny maybe Ralph Macchio? That was just a moment of uh, trying to figure out who's who. Hope you had fun. <laughs> so my sister, she just walked in um, from work and I went and told her what I did just literally a clip ago about um, stating who's who, the actors. And she basically gave me 100 on top of 100 that I got it correct. The only person that I didn't really know was this Steve Valance type of person, and it appears to be Tom Cruise. But I got everybody correct based on the descriptions of the book. So what I'm going to do now, I'm gonna take a little break and I'm gonna head off to the greatest store in Florida, Publix, okay. <laughs> and I'm gonna go get myself a Publix sub for me and my family, and then we might end up watching Walker, Texas Ranger. I'm gonna take a break. I'm on page 25. We've met the entire gang. We met this girl named Sherry Cherry. Cherry, maybe she's the Valance girl. Hold on. Okay, Cherry Valance. So maybe she is she the brother of Tom Cruise? What is, hold on, Dairy. Hold on, there's this guy named Steve Randall, maybe? Steve Randall. Oh, Steve Randall. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, very, I just, I don't know. This but, comes very easily to me. Do you know who Jerry is? No, I don't. I do know who Jerry is. I just, I said, no, I don't. <gasps> I'm going to leave your voice in here. Cherry is Diane Keaton. <laughs> no, it is the beautiful Diane Lane, right? I just thought about it like as in diner style or something. I don't know. This is so fun. I love this book so far. Don't tell me that we're going to have a rumble West Side Story style and somebody's going to die. Just don't tell me that. Tell me. Yes. No. They're so young. <sighs> All right, I'm going to Publix. of light blue, pouring rain, crescent moon has taken itself far away to lay down, one more lazy dream. Farming is good. That's a real good start. Now, I'll tell you what, 
I'm gonna come over there. I'm gonna. Got me inside me. I still hear the words you told me. Baby, gonna be so lonely when I'm gone. But it isn't true. I was just as lonely with you. And I guess it always will be. Hey, Palomino. Palomino. Took kind of a horse. Ah, uh, nearly there. Nearly there, 180, and I'm on page. Uh, let me say, let me say, focus. Oh my gosh, even my tire, my camera's getting tired. Two, hold on, 101. Yes, 101. Dalmatians. Right by my side. We were ghosts with arms open wide, but we floated away. That's filled with peace of sometimes a man just needs a wife. Break my heart, break my bones. You still hang around wherever I may roam. Yeah, you got behind my eye. It's more than I can take. But I won't fight. I can't pretend No, it's much too late To try to make amends For all those careless nights Brought the darkest days I still hear the words you told me Baby, gonna be so lonely When I'm gone But it isn't true I was just as lonely with you so I guess I always will be
Alrighty, so this is what we're working with. I just fly by the seat of my pants. I think that's the phrase. And this is how it turned out. Of course, I'll show it to you with the lights off, but I think it's very fun. This could stay around for any holiday like 4th of July, Memorial, et cetera, et cetera, Labor Day, you know, anything fun and festive like that. If you guys can believe it, it's been maybe almost a month and a half since whatever the final clip was for Memorial Weekend as past 4th of July. Lots of crazy political turmoil has happened in my country. If you know what I'm talking about, if you know, you know. And it's been very hard to complete this 24 hour readathon. I'm so, so busy. Yo, let me tell you what happened. So I was reading The Outsiders just fine, gobbling it up. It is on its way to be a five-star read. Oh, even my mid-year book freak out tag video is up already. So that's how far gone I am, meaning far out I am and how long it's been since I picked up the camera to wrap up this video. But he, I, I just, I'm just gonna do the stopwatch method for the rest of the video. I feel like I failed because I wasn't able to read within a 24 hour period successfully, you know, but it's okay. We read because it's fun and this is why uh, we watch videos like this to see how we do, right? But anyway, the last part, where did we last leave? I had a delicious Publix uh, watching one of my favorite shows with my family, Walker, Texas Ranger. You guys need to watch that show. It is on Peacock and I believe Hulu right now as of July, 2024. But, oh, it did not go so well. I got so tired and I was like, I can't do this. Like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm so tired. At 10 o'clock, I like like I checked out. I was like, damn, that's a lot of reading in one day. I can't even tell you. So I read maybe nine hours for about nine hours straight. So can you imagine that I still have a ways to go? I got to the part in The Outsiders where Johnny and Pony Boy end up at the church and then there's an incident that happens there and then everybody kind of gets back together. I, I don't want to give spoilers but oh man this is such a good book. Unfortunately because I was prepping for my mid-year book freak out tag video I needed some kind of like trailer clips for the video and once you start searching things on YouTube it'll give you the recommendations and I ended up finding out a spoiler for for the end of of The Outsiders and I'm just so so sad and mad. I was telling my sister no. No, this can't be it. She's like, just read the book already. So hopefully today I can finish. I'm really hoping that that is the case. I have, let's see how much I have left. Is this an awkward angle? <laughs> okay, I'm on, I'm on chapter seven. It seems like it's, you know, so little, but in total there are 12. There are 12 chapters, so I have five chapters left to go. This is what I've read right here. Let me get rid of my face. Camera wants to focus here. So this is what I've read. And this is how far I have to go. So I feel like, you know, I'm kind of halfway there actually. When you think about it, six chapters done. I started chapter seven, so I have somewhat set six more chapters to go. I'm halfway there. And I'm so curious how this all ends up going for us. I am just feeling like I'm gonna cry. That's my update. And this video is extremely chaotic. Can't tell you. So it's been even a few more days since that last clip. I just want to be honest. I am quite transparent. And um, oh, something bad happened. Something bad happened to one of our characters, y'all. Oh my gosh, let me set this down. I'm not even looking at the camera. Ugh, lots of things have changed in my room. The placement of a lot of things. I have like a new bookshelf over here, an additional setup thing over there. You'll see. But The Outsiders, I'm on chapter, I believe, 10. Oh man, things are heating up. 
huge, huge development. So I took some notes down so that way I can be a little bit cogent and cohesive and coherent. Okay, so here are some of my thoughts about the book in general. I adore the um, bond that the siblings have, Soda Pop, Pony Boy, and Daryl. I love how much they love each other. I love the brotherly bond. It's just so, it's incredible to see it. I just love it. There's this point in the story where Pony Boy asks Soda Pop what it's like to be in love and Soda Pop says it's really nice and that he's gonna marry somebody in the future and it's just so, it's so sweet how comfortable I suppose Pony Boy is with his older brother that he would just ask a question like that. I really enjoyed that. This aspect of the story, these true and matter of fact sort of questions they're so unvarnished and so straightforward it's uh there's no nonsense no nonsense there's no guys there's no veneer to it so i really love that about their relationship yeah and i also wrote i love how <laughs> pony boy talks about his affection for his older brother soda pop i consider those three boys the charmed ones i always love a trinity of uh siblings whenever like a, a set of three is are super super close and if there's more the more the merrier. Oh yeah, and I also found out that those are the actual names on their birth certificates. Soda and Pony Boy is actually on their birth certificate. Like who names their kid that? I feel so bad for the character Johnny played by Ralph Macchio. I know it now by hand because my heart because you know it's been literally like two months since I've been reading this book since I started this challenge. But they say that he's like, he basically has the smell of PTSD. It's a perpetual fear that he has. The book explains it that Johnny is like a lost puppy that's been kicked one too many times. There is an incident uh, where his character was alone and he ran into some socias and it just, they beat the heck out of him and it's just basically traumatized him. In the book they describe how they were examining Johnny after the beating and I nearly cry because again that's just a kid he didn't ask to be beat up on the streets you know. <sighs> um yeah just horrible. He's 16 years old but he's still a kid and to be ambushed like that is just unthinkable you know. Another moment in the book that stood out to me was when Cherry Valen says that she could see herself falling in love with Dallas, Dallas Winston. Okay, so in the book, Cherry Valance says that she could see herself falling in love with Dallas Winston. And I thought that was incredulous because there's a scene where Cherry and her friend are at a movie theater in Ponyboy, Soda Bop in Dallas. They kind of come and sit near them and Dallas is just, you know, your typical rude, annoying guy. And all of a sudden this girl saying that she could see herself falling in love with this guy. Like what? Like, I don't get it. Oh, something that kind of made me laugh a little bit too in the book was that they have this like whistle that they use with the gang. It kind of reminds me of Fantastic Mr. Fox. <laughs> What do you mean? That's my trademark. And it also reminds me of West Side Story. This particular type of whistle in West Side Story so I thought that that was kind of funny um, that they would mention such a thing. And my final thing that I wanted to mention was again how much how thoughtful both Johnny and Ponyboy are. So basically Johnny and Ponyboy they are on the run and they end up in this abandoned church. Johnny goes out for some supplies and he's so thoughtful that he brings Gone with the Wind for Ponyboy because he knows how much he likes to read so these are the kind of things that I just love about the book, these little, little details. So as I said in a previous clip somewhere, I finished the whole scene with the church, something crazy happens there. Everybody kind of like converges again. And then right now I'm in this traumatic scene where a huge event just happens and it's all, it seems like it's all down here. <laughs> Heal. It's all downhill from here. So I have about like maybe an hour or 
Yeah, so I'm on chapter 10. So I have literally this much left of the book. I'm always like in the way for this thing. I hope that's focused. Anyway, I have that about that much left for the book and I should be done in a jiffy. I'm on page 150 and the end of the book, it's 180. So 30 pages, I should be done in an hour. Let's see what my reaction will be. I know something bad is coming. Something bad is coming. I don't know what it is, but it's not gonna be great. Something's coming, I don't know what it is, but it is gonna be great. Okay, let me interject really quickly. One of the uh, gang members from the Greasers are people, okay? They pulled out a heater, aka a weapon. I don't think I can say the G word on YouTube. Okay, I'll just pop it up or whatever. But yeah, he pulled out one of those. It's not loaded, but he's pulling a bluff. Oh, I'm thinking the police are going to do something about that because you don't just pull out a weapon and um, get away with it like that you know so I'm about to find out what's going on here <sighs> you blasted fool Oh man. The police are shooting. My eyes are glistening just a little bit. It has nothing to do with um, anything tragic. I just, uh, I don't know, I get emotional when it has to deal with siblings, but see how I'm talking right now. Yeah, just the relationship between Dairy and Pony Boy and whatnot, I just, I don't know. I don't know, there's nothing like it. Just the way that they talk to each other, it just, it's just, it's just, it makes me very happy. <laughs> but there's nothing coming out. See, I'm stone cold, I'm stone cold. <laughs> it finally happened here <sighs> did I force that tear out now oh. I'm on the second to last page and um, there's a surprise that uh, a character finds they find a surprise kind of letter a surprise note oh man young lady wrote this book it is so impressive it's so heartfelt it's so good it's just so good i'm not bawling my eyes out i just teared up because it's like it's an emotional it's an emotional kind of story but wow that's really funny it's like the ending of the book picks up at the beginning of this book if you read it and if you ever do end up reading it i think you'll understand what i'm saying this is really good i want to see the movie this weekend today's friday july 26 gosh wow i 
think this is the exact, like basically mark of when I was last filming the 24 hour readathon, like the weekend of Memorial. <sighs> okay, my next book. I feel like, should I stop the vlog? No, no, I wanna continue. My next book is Lord of the Flies. I wanna just hop right into it. <sighs> yeah. So basically I have 11 hours down, 11 hours down and whatever this number is left of reading. Oh, this one's really good. Man, I wish I read this sooner. Favorite part about this book has to be the relationship of the siblings. It's incredible. I love it. Anyway, Lord of the Flies by William Golding is next. <laughs> My name is William Golding and I wrote this book, Lord of the Flies, in I think it was either 1953 or 1954. There have been a great many things said about how it came to be written and I don't know whether any of them are true or not. As far as I'm concerned, it happened because one day I was sitting one side of the fireplace and my wife was sitting the other and I suddenly said to her, wouldn't it be a good idea to write a story about some boys on an island showing how they would really behave being boys and not little saints as they usually are in children's books. And she said, that's a first class idea, you write it. So I went ahead and wrote it. When girls say to me, and very reasonably, why isn't it a bunch of girls? And why did you write this about a bunch of boys? Well, my reply is, um, I was once a little boy. I have been a brother. I have been a father. Uh, I am going to be a grandfather. I have never been a sister or a mother or a grandmother, so this is why I wrote it really about little boys. That's one answer. Another answer is, of course, to say that if you, as it were, scale down human beings, scale down society, if you land with a group of little boys, they are more like scaled down society than a group of little girls would be. Don't ask me why, and this is a terrible thing to say because I'm going to be chased from hell to breakfast by all the um, women who talk about equality. This is nothing to do with equality at all. I mean, I think women are foolish to pretend they're equal to men. They're far superior and always have been. But one thing you cannot do with them is take a bunch of them and boil them down, so to speak, into a set of little girls who would then become a kind of image of civilization of society. That's another reason why they were little boys. The other thing is, why aren't they little boys and little girls? Well, if they'd been little boys and little girls, we being who we are, sex would have raised its lovely head. And I didn't want this book to be about sex. I mean, sex is too trivial a thing to get in with a story like this, which was about the problem of evil and the problem of how people are to live together in society, not just as lovers or man and wife. Well, to begin with chapter one, which is called The Sound of the Shell. Guys, I never do this coming at you after the fact. I finished this book. I'm so sorry. But I couldn't interject, but oh my gosh, it has been one of the hardest videos I've ever had to film. I felt extremely frustrated and like overwhelmed and disappointed with myself because of how the video like progressed, how long it took to film and whatnot. So I'm like, you know, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. So I love this book. Um, it's five stars. It's an excellent classic that I think anybody who's age, I believe, that's my opinion, like a nine and up can read this. And I think if you're a grown person, you need to read a book like this. We are tackling the, like, what feels like the beginning of man, like civilization. It, it feels like we're in the Garden of Eden almost in this book. That's just my opinion of it. I'm not sure if anybody's ever analyzed it and said that, but it does feel like, you know, we're like, we're in this uh, jungle, this island basically, where we're just, these uh, characters have been plopped down and the guy's like overhead watching to see who's, who's good and who's bad and who's gonna fail and who's gonna, you know, rise above. If you didn't know what this book was about, Lord of the Flies by William Gilding. I have a little clip for you guys about the title, Beelzebub. Here it is. 
Beelzebub is a term used in the Gospels to refer to Satan or the devil. But what's the origin of the term? Where does this term come from? Well, it's kind of combined into two words here. First, the Biel part is originating from a god of the Philistines, often referred to in the Old Testament, Baal. These, um, the people of Israel often were worshiping a false idol named Baal. And it means Lord. And the second part of the word, Zebub, means flies. So the term literally means Lord of the Flies. This is actually the origin of the popular novel, Lord of the Flies. Um, it was symbolic of a certain part of, of that book and the influence of Satan on the characters in the story. So Beelzebub, or Beelzebul in some cases, it literally means Lord of the Flies. Isn't that just a little disturbing and insane? I thought about it the entire time I was reading the breakdown and etymology, so to speak, or the root of each of a section of that word to mean Lord of the Flies. I just thought that that was really incredible. Not incredible isn't good, but like, wow, this is like, I never really knew that. <laughs> but yeah, I really love this book. And again, if you didn't know what it was about, I will try my best to describe it to you. These uh, group of school age children, approximately from six years old to maybe 13 years old, have crashed down on this deserted island. There's lots of food and lots of wildlife for them to be able to eat fruits and wild boar. One kid named Ralph has been elected as the leader. And this other kid who is our antagonist, he is our I, yeah, yeah. He's not the Lord of the Flies. Lord of the Flies is literally a stake of a boar that the kids have offered up to this mythical beast and scary thing on the island that they think exists as a like a humbly leave us alone kind of thing so that's the lord of the flies it's like this literal boar that's on a stick that flies congregate to as a peace offering as a not as a sacrifice it could almost lend to that but as a just a offering because these kids think they, they saw some type of beast in the the foliage the jungle the island and they're not quite sure what the heck is going on here so these uh, group of kids have hunted down a wild boar i suppose they severed its head and they have offered up this boar's head to that beast so that way it could um you know leave them alone but yeah so J um ralph is our main protagonist he's our kind of hero boy he is elected leader by everyone it's a majority rules and this other kid named jack meridu is a little bit of a feisty i feel like this entire time i pictured him as just such a a sniveling irritating child even not being dropped off in the island but like if he was like you know back in the civilization back in, in his choir boy days at school the the i don't know what they call those things in england but the boarding schools, the dormitories, the... I don't know, they have a specific name. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, I feel like he would be such an irritating kid. He... he basically wants the power and it just goes terribly, terribly bad. A, lot, a couple of kids end up dying. We automatically see this tension between the two characters, Ralph and Jack. And Jack kind of forms his own little... Um, a group called the hunters they're the ones who hunt the wild animals to you know bring the meat to the rest of the group and that in a sense kind of gives him this feeling of power of that um, you know I'm, I'm like I have a skill and I have this primitive savage nature of me that I want to tap into and he taps into it a little bit too much and Ralph the hero boy I would say he and a couple others are a little bit more like the voice of reason they're a little bit more logical they're methodical they think about things like starting up a fire so that way any passing ships could come and rescue them keeping up the fire keeping up the smoke signal this sos so to speak yeah so they are just kind of like, like two different um sides of the brain two different ways of thinking ways of dealing with things and uh, you know my favorite character piggy oh man he is somewhat of a uh, Another voice of reason, a counselor, somebody who has uh, glasses, is overweight and is kind of like low on the totem pole. Nobody listens to him really. And it just kind of really goes, it, it goes, it gets to be bad. It gets to be terrible. At the end of this book, when I finished it, I, I don't want to spoil it really, but when I did finish it, I felt so, so low and it just felt like somebody died. Like meaning like 
like somebody super close to me i felt like <laughs> this is gonna sound very weird but if you ever had any like um any teams that you would root for for any like games i'm not talking about the olympics like this i need to be a little less hard on myself but we're all the way up into the olympics i started this when it was freaking memorial and we're already far into the olympics maybe a couple weeks now it's like august you guys i'm so mad at myself and i need to stop i gotta work on that yeah but if you guys ever have any love of uh sports i don't know whatever football soccer whatever it might be and you're rooting for a team and then it's like oh that team loses it's that kind of feeling it's like it's just a very weird despondent dis depressing kind of low-spirited feeling that i was uh, feeling after this reading this book like it just it just makes you feel like like your, your your spirit is just super low i guess that's the best way you can describe it like i didn't want to do anything after reading this but yeah it's an excellent book i highly recommend you guys do read it i'm so so sorry for how chaotic this vlog was if you did come this far maybe put a ship for lord of the flies or an anchor since you've anchored yourself all the way to the end of the video to see this yeah and um uh, you can just put that in the comments just so that i know you got this far or not but uh i want to thank you guys so much for experiencing my first 24 hour readathon i will try it again maybe next year i'm like sick i'm sick to my stomach to think of trying another 24 hour readathon it just makes me so like obnoxious for that <laughs> thank you so much again for watching i really hope that you guys did enjoy the video i ran out of room guys yeah i want to thank you guys so much for watching even though this is a chaotic vlog i will attempt this far 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 into the future thank you so much again for watching and i will see you guys in my august tbr mm -hmm.